One time we we're out on the river and I caught this massive trout. It was like a 29 inch or just a stud of a cutthroat, just beautiful fish. And Alex looks at me after I release it and he goes, Spencer, I'd love to be as good as you at fly fishing someday. And I said, you can, young grasshopper. You just have to follow the seven tips that have been handed down from the fly fishing gods. All right, all right, all right. That is not what happened. That was not a 29-incher. Try 18. And let's just ignore everything that he said, except for the seven tips on how to become a better fly angler. That is what we're going to talk about today. This is Untangled, fly fishing for everyone. Presented by Ventures Fly Company. Hey everybody, welcome to it. This is Untangled. I'm your host, Spencer Durant. Joined in studio this week by none other than Ventures Fly Co. CVO, Chief Video Officer, Alex Stoltz. <laughs> Hello. How's it going? Good. Yeah, you came all the way to Wyoming just to fish with me, huh? I did. Yeah, this is going to be one of the shortest episodes ever because as soon as we're done, we get to go fishing. So, uh, yeah, I think that about wraps it up. Yeah, keep your fly in the water and have a good day. (laughs) Tie lines, everybody. No, not quite. Uh, We are going to go fishing right after this, though. We're pretty excited about that. I'm pumped. It's going to be a good time. But like we teased in the hook to this show, we're going to chat today about seven ways you can level up your skills as a fly angler because a lot of the times and I think we see this now more that we are we've been working with beginners and that, that's where our focus is as companies is beginners but some of those beginners that have been with us are starting to level up themselves so we're getting more of those questions of like how do I become a better angler what do I do what what's the secret sauce you know and I always, when I hear that, I think they're just making fun of me for loving wings so much, but <laughs> you know, it is what it is, right? So we decided that we needed to do a podcast episode about some of the tips that can help you become a better angler. And we just brainstormed these seven over the last week or so, just trying to think through this show, make sure we do. Get yeah. Up. This might've been kind of selfish actually. Cause I mean, obviously we're trying to improve as anglers, right? So we were just thinking of ideas on how we could improve. I mean, speak for yourself. All right. When there's no room left to improve, what, <laughs> what do I have to improve on? Um, and if you say fitting into my waiters, I'm going to slap you. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. Well, now everybody's going to think it. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding aside. It's uh, it was a little bit, you know, selfish in our part too, because it, it's a big thing that we're always trying to do because, it, you know, I just picked up a uh, trout spay rod actually, because I'm going to teach myself. Have you trout used it yet? No, but we're going to go cast it before we leave today because <laughs> it is so much stinking fun. So maybe we'll take it with us. Yeah. You know, why not? Okay. But you know, so I'm at that point where trout spay is something that interested me. So I picked up a rod to do it and try and teach myself. And I've been doing this, let's see, how old am I? Since I was 22 years-ish, I've been fly fishing. Nice. So, you, you know, it, 22 years in and there's still a ton of stuff that I have no clue about, stuff that I'm still trying to learn too. So, when when we talk about like, oh, you, there's, there's ways to level up. It's not you peons. You, I can't believe you, you simple-minded beginner. That, that's not where we're at. That's not where we're coming from. No, well, we're... I would say we are intermediate to advanced anglers. Like we've, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. And by no means are we saying that this is, that these are the only seven ways to improve, right? Now, this is just what came to our mind as we, we tried to think of the folks who are starting out and who, you know, don't have two decades under their belt. And these are the, these are the steps we would recommend that you take. And the steps that we're taking, right? Yeah, exactly. So with that with that said, let's jump into them. We got seven. So grab a Diet Coke, right? Get comfy. Grab some goldfish and Diet Coke and get ready. That's goldfish? What? Are you serious? Cool. Are we five years old? You know what? <laughs> think think about being five years old. How wonderful it, that was. Let it be know that on a on one fishing trip, Spencer made a stop at Costco and buy a Costco-sized bag of goldfish for the trip. No, it was I like three days. I did not make you 
do that. You were already stopping at Costco and you said, do you want anything? And I said, yeah, I'll have some goldfish <laughs> at Costco. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was basically forced because I mean, you would have been, you would have thrown a tantrum had we gotten oh, yeah, into the river without yeah. your goldfish. Oh, I'm, I'm sure I would have. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. Let's get into number one. <laughs> so first thing to be aware of, to remember, to learn if you really want to improve yourself, uh, you need to get familiar with the why. And we've spent a ton of time talking about this. And what I mean is it's not enough. And I've said this before. I sound like a broken record, but it's not enough to just say, what are they hitting on and go to the river and use that fly and stand in that spot. What fly were you using? Yeah. And this is why I railed against fishing apps in a recent episode, because they don't teach you the why they don't. All they do is tell you where to go and what to use. You're not understanding why that's effective there. And if you don't understand the, if you don't understand the why behind things, why did this fish eat this fly at this time? Yeah, we don't know a hundred percent, but if there's a caddis hatch and you put a caddis on and the fish eats it, we can, we can comfortably say, you know, we know why that fish ate that bug. And it's those little lessons that once you understand the why, you're able to translate that to a whole bunch of different rivers and actually find some success there. Because if you don't know the why, it's really like you're just throwing spaghetti at the wall, hoping something sticks. Yeah. I was actually just on the river right before this. Spencer had to go to school. So (laughs) yeah, don't rub it in. (laughs) So I was up on this cutthroat stream and there it was about 11 o'clock before that there wasn't really much happening. And I come up to this deeper pool and I turn the corner and there are fish just going nuts. Mm -hmm. And so I I walk up there and before I had gone to the river, Spencer had mentioned that he'd been up there a little while ago and there was trichos hatching. And so I (laughs) trichos, man, like they're great, but they're so freaking small. They are so tiny. (laughs) They, They are. So, I rolled my eyes. I was like, all right, well, time to tie on a really small dry fly. So I tied on a little size 20 atom parachute atoms. And I was like, maybe this will work. And I worked the tail of the pool and the first cast, boom, big cutthroat came up. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. And then I started trying to work the rest of the pool and I saw a a fish come up and refuse it. I saw another fish come up, refuse it. And I was like, okay, well, what's happening now? And I started to realize that I had 4X tippet on Mm -hmm. size 20 dry fly, which is probably a little over. How did you even get the 4X through the eye of that hook? It wasn't that hard. Oh, okay. All right. Maybe if you were at my level of angling, you would be able to do that. All right. I'm sorry. (laughs) I didn't, didn't mean to upset the delicate genius over there. So I was like, all right. Size 20 parachute atoms. I already had a fish take it. So maybe it's not the fly. Maybe I just have some drag on there. So I was like, all right, I'll just step it down to some 5X tippet. Threw that on there. Boom, caught another fish. And then I proceeded to try and catch another one. And another refusal. Another refusal. And then they just started not even bothering with it at all. Um, At that point, I got a little frustrated. I tied on a couple other flies. Uh Um, did you use some of the words I taught you <laughs> <laughs> multiple and I went through a couple like small little midges, Matt's midge, Griffith's gnat. I was like, maybe it's the fly. And yeah. Ultimately I gave up and I actually grabbed my camera and put the long range lens on. And I was like, well, these fish are going nuts. I might as well get some so, cool dry fly. So that's why you got the dry. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. So how does that tie into the why then? So I sat there and I filmed uh-huh. for 45 minutes trying to get a really cool dry fly. Eat. And so yeah. I was just sitting there on the bank watching fish eat. Uh-huh. And I had this long range lens on and I started seeing caddis on the water. In the lens. And the fish were coming up and they were smacking caddis. Yeah. And so then I was like, oh. There's this caddis hatch going on. And I started looking around, widening my gaze. And I started seeing, oh, there's a lot of caddis that are going around and they're they're hitting the water and that's what the fish are eating. Yeah. So I tied on a caddis emerger and I caught 10 fish in a row. It was boom. like boom, 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 boom. And so that's 
that's the why I yep. understood that I, I took that time to kind of understand why are the fish eating off the top right now? Yeah. They're eating caddis. A lot more success. Yeah, exactly. No, that, uh, that's great. And that ties into another one of our points actually that uh, we'll get into in a minute, but that, that really, that really does illustrate it there that it, once you understand the why behind certain things, like why did you need to put another split shot on? Yeah. Why did you need to get deeper? Well, that's where the fish are right now. You know, why did, why did you catch all those fish at the tail of the pool? Well, tail outs are always a really great spot to fish in a pool better than the middle of the pool. Most of the time anyways. So it's those little things that you've got to figure out that, again, a lot of people skip over in their rush to just get to the water and get fish. And it's doing you a disservice when you don't know the why behind what you're doing. So, and I always like usually good places to fish. You get, you get to drive in the truck. We were talking about this yesterday. Spencer lives so far away, guys. No. He lives out in the freaking middle of nowhere. I live exactly well, okay, not exactly. I live very close to a, a great spot, okay? Okay, well, anyways, I'm in the truck forever driving here. You have a lot of pondering time. Yeah, so I've, uh, I've driven down to Utah way more than you've driven up here, <laughs> just by the way. But usually, you go fishing, you have to drive a little bit. I find if I, can, if I just don't turn on that podcast, I don't turn on that music, and I actually think about it as I'm driving home, like, oh, that was such a good day of fishing. What did I learn while I was out there? Oh, this is why this happened. This is why that happened. And maybe you don't know, and you have to look it up when you get home. Yep. Yeah. So th- there's always room to learn, but you, you definitely got to, you definitely have to start there and, and hope that that works out for you. So uh, get familiar with the why. Tip number one. Tip number two. Don't get stuck in a rut. What oh, a, so I shouldn't use a bounce rig every single time I go fishing? You know, I'm amazed that you talked about putting a dry fly on. Is that the first time in 2023 that you did it? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I posted on Instagram this morning on a story, and I was like, I'm doing a tip of the week today. What do you guys want to learn about? And a bunch of you said bounce rigs, and I was yeah, super thank offended. You. So I'm never asking anyone about tips of the week idea ever again. So no, thanks, it everyone. was <laughs> no, kidding. it's a valid thing. You, you, you <laughs> talked it up. You uh, you have spent so much time telling us how great the bounce rig is <laughs> that it's selfish for you to keep it all to yourself. Uh, You've got to share it. All right, maybe I will do a tip of the week on that. Yeah, I think you should. Tip of the week number 185 yeah. <laughs> coming to you in two. 2028. Yeah. Well, hey, as long as we get it, that's, that's all I care about. <laughs> so don't get stuck in a rut. Uh, try fishing for new fish in new places. Push yourself and you're going to get a lot more knowledge that way. My, uh, I'm a better trout angler because of all the time I spent fishing for bass and, uh, and oh, I can't say it. <laughs> You know what? You know the word, right, Alex? I have no idea what you're about to say. It's, it starts with a C. I, I, I was fishing for bass and... I I have no idea. You're going to make me say it. <laughs> Lay it out there for the people. I, I was fishing for bass and for... Cup, 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 Carp. Carp? Yes. Those garbage fish? Yeah, I was fishing for bass and carp. <sighs> no, I'm kidding. I had to play that up because people got that aversion <laughs> to carp, right? No, I'm a better trout fisherman, though, because I've spent t- time fishing for bass and carp, and you learn a lot from that 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 translates and vice versa. I've heard carp are super picky. They can be, and they're just their their mouths are a little bit more sensitive than a trout's. So they can suck the fly in and spit it out quicker than you can set the hook. <laughs> and the thing with carp fishing is it's very visual. So you're watching it happen. Okay. And with trout, you usually don't see them eat the nymph and spit it out the way that you do with carp. So it, it's just a very interesting experience. And there, there really is nothing wrong with carp fishing. So I'm not, I'm not knocking the carp fishing. I just, I, I had to, had to do that. But don't get stuck in a rut because there's a lot that you're going to learn from other species, even other, if all you ever do is fish the little creek by your house, if all you ever do is fish the lower Provo, okay, first of all, I'm sorry, 
because that's an awful existence to have. Second, uh, you're never going to learn jack squat that's going to apply to other rivers because if you go to the middle Provo, it's a completely different river. Yeah. You know, just go up a tiny bit. For sure. So I'm being a little hyperbolic here, but, (laughs) you you know, you're going to learn things on the lower Provo, but broaden your horizons a little bit. I mean, you learned how to fly fish on the lower Provo. Uh, among other places, yes. It wasn't yeah. my only classroom. Okay. I had a few others, but yeah. So you learned more than the bounce rig. I did. In <laughs> fact, I never even fished the bounce rig. I've never fished a bounce rig on the lower Provo. Oh. So uh, That's why you don't catch fish there. I catch way more than anybody else. <laughs> Prove it. Yeah, okay. We'll go. We'll book us some time on the now private <laughs> land, and we'll go, and I'll show you up. <laughs> oh. R.I.P. Yeah, that's still sad. All I'm right, never so going to get over Don't that. get stuck in a rut. Yep. What does that mean? Like, don't. So don't fish the same river yep. all the time. Push yourself to go look for different things. Push yourself to try different things. Uh, again, I want to talk about the trout spay thing that I'm trying to teach myself. I'm going to learn a lot from that. I know I'm going to learn a lot from trout spay. You're probably going to suck at it at first. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be going out and goose egging it for a while until I figure it out. Because especially here in Wyoming, spay fishing is not really a thing. Yeah. So it's not <laughs> like I can call up my buddy. Hey, Joe, help me learn how to spay fish. You know, I told my buddy Joe about it. And he looked at me. He's like, what the heck is spay fishing? <laughs> you know, and I'm like, well, you see, it's this thing and it's a huge rod. And I explained it to him and he says, well, why don't you just throw a streamer? <laughs> and I'm like, well, I am. And he's like, yeah, but just, just do it normal. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and, and so, but then I can't cast it 400 yards. Exactly. And that's the whole, <laughs> that's the whole point. Right. So that's what we're trying to do is just broaden your horizons a little bit. Look for the opportunities to do different things and to have different fishing experiences because it's going to make you a better angler. Uh, all the time I've spent in Alaska salmon fishing, uh, fish for grayling. That's helped me be a better trout angler when I get back here. Okay, so different Wyoming. rivers, different different species, yep. different techniques. Yep. If you fish the dry flies all the time, maybe try nymphing. If you nymph all the time, maybe try some streamers. Yeah, you just switch it up because you're going to learn stuff and you're going to get a more complete picture of what the trout are doing. Just going to make you a better angler overall. Cool. Awesome. Well, uh, let's see. Tip number three to help you level up. Start tying some flies. The best anglers I know without fail all tie their own flies. I don't know anybody who's an incredible angler who doesn't tie their flies. And I'm I'm not saying that I would agree with that. You know, it, it, that's just how like it is. Really good anglers. Doing this helps you get a much better understanding of aquatic life and aquatic insect life in particular. And I think it comes back to that first one, the why, right? Yep. You start to understand. Okay, this is what an emerger looks like. This is how an emerger has to sit in the water. I'm going to make this fly sit right in the surface film so that the fish eat it because I was out there today and my duns were floating too high and my unweighted nymphs were sinking too low. The fish weren't eating them. I need that emerger. You really start to understand aquatic insects so much better when you're trying to imitate them. So your knowledge base is going to expand exponentially the more and more that you tie Plus, the nice thing here is if you tie your own flies, you kind of guarantee that you almost always have what you need on hand if you're not lazy like me. Like me, I ran out of Frenchies. Today? Uh, The other day, but I was going to tie some up during the game last night, but uh, I forgot. Yeah, we got busy. Yeah. Yeah, we did. (laughs) Well, but, you know, unless... But guess what? I went out of my comfort zone. I didn't get stuck in a rut, and I tied on a different fly. What, a pheasant tail? That was the first one, but uh-huh. I didn't catch anything on <laughs> it. Because so. pheasant tail so much different No, I told you. I went parachute atoms yeah. and the caddis emerging. That thing has been killing it this summer. I know. It's I, ridiculous. Because it, it sits in that service film like we were talking Alex about. Alex catches all these fish on this caddis emerger, and I haven't caught any on that fly <laughs> all summer, I don't think. I think slays. Yeah. I, I haven't. It's it's kind of funny how that's working <laughs> out. But must be presentation. It's got to be. It's got to be. <laughs> Drag free drift, man. Oh, but the nice thing too about tying your own flies, you can kind of throw your own spin on patterns that work really well for your own local fisheries. Uh, I've done that quite a bit back, you know, when I was living in Utah, I'm fishing the lower Provo a lot. I had some blue wing emergers that I tied up specifically for the blue wing hatches on the Provo because those bugs were just a certain shade, certain color. 
So I was making sure I matched them. And I was unhappy with how a lot of the traditional emerger patterns floated. So I tied in some different materials and I got these ones to float better so that I could actually see them on the water. That's the <laughs> hardest part about fishing emergers. That's true. Is you can never freaking see them. Yeah. So being able to make those little tweaks without affecting the fly, it, again, that's that's going to catapult you into a different area of fly fishing. Once you know how to do these things, it's intimidating at first. But I mean, you know, not to be too shamely, shamelessly promoting ourselves here, but we do have a fly tying master class. We do. So, and we'll link that in the podcast description for y'all. Yeah, we worked really but, hard on that. By we, Alex means he did. Uh, um, we we all did. Yeah, we no, we did. It was it was <laughs> it was a good time. Uh, but you will learn a ton from tying your own flies. It's just kind of it, it. It's kind of crazy. Like I I know I wouldn't. I wouldn't have the success I do on a lot of rivers if I didn't tie my own flies. Yeah. So. And just to talk about the mass cost just for a second, because you think fly fishing is complicated. How about trying to get into fly tying? Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, my gosh. So we tried to design this course where you could come into it and you you know absolutely nothing about fly tying. And you can start at ground level and then episode by episode module by module you just keep getting better and better and better yep so don't if you're at all interested in tying just go watch the first episode we'll link it up in the in the show notes and yeah i just go check it out yeah. see, see if it interests you if it does not everybody likes tying their own flies but yep. uh, it definitely is going to help you become a better angler and and i'll i'll follow up on that i don't love tying yeah i there's some guys that just love it yeah they tie more than they fish yeah and <laughs> i'm not one of those i'm not one of those anglers i i enjoy it but it's probably because i'm fat because my back hurts after too long and <laughs> you know it's a pro tip don't get fat uh, but i i don't hang on i'm writing that down okay thank you alex <laughs> appreciate it uh no i i just don't enjoy i don't love tying the way that some people do i love watching tying videos i watch those things all freaking day long but the uh, the act of tying itself, it gets kind of monotonous sometimes. So you don't have to love it either. I think that's an important thing to remember. But it's something that you need to be adept at. It's like the pain of tying is overcome by the positivities, for the positive results of you tying your own flies, right? Yeah, exactly. Like the, the benefits outweigh the negatives. They, they, they definitely do. Yeah. So, awesome. Uh, let's see. Next tip. We're on tip number four already. Look at that. Cruising here. Yeah. We got to go fishing. Yeah, man. we do. Uh, <laughs> we're running out of time. Right? Hatch is going to be over before yeah, we get we, there. Should we just make it four tips? Oh, well, we <laughs> might have to. Oh, next tip. Be patient and watch. Tip number four. This, Alex alluded to this earlier. This is so big. But it really, it goes counterintuitive to everything because we're saying, you know, you want to get out there in the water. You're so excited and you just get there. You're like, oh, I can't wait. And you watch these YouTube videos and folks just get there and start fishing. Well, what did they cut out? They cut out the part where they were patient and they watched. Yep. They, they cut it out because nobody wants to see me sitting there picking my belly, looking at the river and I'm looking at Alex and saying, yeah, I bet there's fish here. <laughs> you know, but it's an important thing. And I was thinking about. One of our trips, we went to Oregon twice this summer because we just love being in the truck for lots of pondering 16 time. hours together. Yeah. You know, it, it's hard to beat our company. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was thinking about those Oregon trips specifically. We sat and watched that river for a good chunk of time before we ever got in yep. and started fishing there. And when I say be patient and watch, you get to the river, take a few minutes to observe the river before you start fishing. Watch for the bugs. Look at what's coming off, like Alex talked about earlier. Watch the fish if you can see them. Watch the currents. Identify the spots where you think fish are likely going to hang out. And there might be nothing going on. Yeah. And that's another thing to consider. Okay, I don't see any bugs flying around. I'm yep. probably going to be nymphing today. Exactly. You're going to gain so much information from it. You're going to be able to make a game plan before you just jump in. This is why I tell people don't rig up your rod until you get to the river. 
Everybody yeah. wants to rig it up at the truck. I'm like, no, get down to the river and then rig it up. Yeah, it's a good rule of thumb. So it, seriously, it takes maybe five minutes to just sit and watch the river. I'm not, you don't have to sit there and be Claude Monet making a painting of it or whatever. You, you just need to watch. Because again, this is another thing that the best anglers I know, they do this. They have a solid plan of attack before they start fishing. They don't just go into it with everything pre-made and try and force the river to match their rig. They match their, they, they match their rig to the river. Yeah, that's but, a good point. So, uh, it, and like I said, Alex touched on this earlier. So is there anything else you want to add to this one? Or? No, I think that covers it. Okay. Well, let's dive right into the next one. This is tip number five. And that's kind of interesting that it's one that I've got to say, but I, I think it needs to be said. Keep your line in the water. All the time? All well, as often as what you if I possibly want to cast? can. Well, then get your line back in the water as quick as possible, right? <laughs> Don't fall in love with false casting, especially for fish and dry flies. The fish, they ain't up in the air last time I checked, right? The only thing up in the air is bugs and potential tangles, right? <laughs> get your flies back in the water as soon as you possibly can, because if you're just sitting there casting and casting and casting, trying to be Brad Pitt and a river runs through it, which I hate that movie, by the way. It, what? Yes, I do. It's You're awful. allowed to fly fish and you hate that movie? Yes, you are. I'm not the biggest fan yeah. either. Oh, it's awful. Roast us in the comments. Yeah, please do. <laughs> uh, there's a lot better fly fishing movies out there, and I'll point you to them some other time. But <laughs> seriously, the you waste so much time if you're just false casting, and you can't catch fish if your fly's not in the water. That sounds like one of those old-timer, like, excuse me, it sounds like one of those old-timer things where, well, you can't catch fish if you ain't in the water. <laughs> They're young and buckaroo. And maybe I'm channeling my inner old guy. I don't know. You do that sometimes. I, I do. I, I do. Especially at the end of a week. I really start to. There's a reason the last half of your name is Rant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like I haven't heard that before. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. No, one of the one of the most successful anglers I ever knew, this guy is incredible he's fished all over the world and he told me if you need more than three casts to get your fly somewhere you're casting too much and that includes salt water fresh water everything dude salt water i fish for bonefish it's crazy how fast you have to you go from seeing the fish to getting your fly in front of that fish without spooking them yep it, that's that's some tough stuff it is it's super quick so you've got to be able to just be efficient about it be good with your time so seriously, keep your line in the water. Make it, that first cast count. Yep. I think is a big one. I I was actually this I, I learned this lesson a while ago where there was this beautiful, slow moving pool, mm -hmm. and I saw this big old rainbow trout and he was just munching. And was it 29 inches long? It was I think it might have been 30. Oh, snap. Yeah. This is a fisherman's story, if you've ever heard one. <laughs> no, he's probably like 20. And he was munching dry flies and I went and I did two false casts uh -huh. and the shadow of my line went right over the fish and he just spooked. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah. And that happens more often than you realize. It does. A lot of times you don't even realize the fish that you've actually spooked. You have spooked well, until you, you, you do You probably it. haven't even seen the fish, right? Yep. Like a lot of times maybe it's like in riffles or like faster moving water and yep. you you can't see the fish, but that shadow still goes through the water and yep. you can spook it. Exactly. So it, it's really one of those things that it, it's hard to, especially as a beginner, you're trying to work the kinks out of your cast. So you want to cast and know that you know how to do it well and you're practicing, but that's what your lawn's for. All right. Your lawn ain't for the HOA. And if you have an HOA, why are you living in communism? First off, all right. <laughs> Second off, your lawn's there for your dog to poop on and for you to fly cast into, right? That's why your lawn exists. So use that for your practice pad. And when you're out on the river, limit those casts as much as possible because that's going to help you catch more fish. And it's, it's just one of those little things that, you know, we're, we're talking about what separates a beginner from somebody who's really good. And that's one of those things. They don't cast more than they need to. So I agree. All right. I think that covers it. So we're on to tip number six. Tip number six. You need to ask some questions in this world. Why? Well, 
if you don't know something or something doesn't make sense, you need to ask so you can understand it, Alex. Why? Because you won't understand. Do I sound it. like one of your students? No comment. <laughs> oh goodness. No, my students ask a ton of questions, and it's good. I tell them not to be afraid. I, you know, I'd say, hey, uh, one of my favorite phrases to use in the classroom is, "I ain't here for decoration, right? I'm here to help." <laughs> and it's true that that's what that's what I'm there for as a teacher, but that's also what I'm here for, uh, and what VFC is here for, just in general, because we were lucky and we learned to fly fish from family members. Yeah, and if you've got that, or you got a friend who's going to take you out then a lot of your questions are a lot easily, very easily answered in that situation, but not everybody has that opportunity now. So if you don't have that, that's what VFC is here for. We're here to answer those questions you have to help you become a better angler. And hopefully you'll clear those things up. That's why on the podcast, I say there are no, there are no questions that are too simple. I want you guys have send those in to me so I can answer them on the show because everybody has those questions at some point. So let's get them answered. Let's help these folks understand what's going on. Yeah. So, and I know it, Alex, it, you had, you had a couple things on this topic too, right? Yeah. I, I love the term lifelong learner. Yeah. Where, I mean, me and you, we, mm -hmm. we have a, like we run a fly fishing company and we have a fly fishing podcast, but we're always trying to learn. Yep. I mean, we try and it's kind of like try and stay humble. I don't, I hope we, I hope we give off that vibe where we don't act like we know everything. And we're, we're really trying to like stay humble and, and really just come down. And I don't want to say come down at the beginner's level. Cause that yeah. even sounds like we're coming down to your level. Yep. Like we're in this too. We're, yep. we're trying to learn. We're, there's days on the water. We go out, we get skunked. Like and, it happens. Yep. And if we know anything, it's that some of our comment, some of our commenters know far more than we ever will. Right. <laughs> That's true. Oh, but no, I got, I got called out this week. Yeah, you did. That was funny. <laughs> some 20 year old thinks that he can teach us about fly fishing. I've been fly fishing for longer than you've been alive. It's like, okay, Mr. Krusty still using a Fenwick Fen glass from the seventies <laughs> and your rubber hip boots. Yeah, and I'll be the first to say I don't know everything about fly fishing. Neither do I. But there are things that I feel pretty confident that I can teach to someone yep. who is just starting out. Exactly. And it's those topics that we try and go over a lot. And we teach like the beginner fly fishing masterclass. This isn't, I'm going to teach you advanced tactics on how to Euro nymph. Yep. Because I don't really know much about that. But I do know how to help beginners and explain things in a way that's a little more simple than maybe other people can do. Yep. And and that's what we're, that's what we're going here for. So again, there are no questions that are too, too dumb. There are no, well, okay. I take that back. Uh, there are such things as dumb questions, uh, <laughs> but there are no questions that are too simple. Uh, it's a better way to phrase it. And we, we want to hear those. And the only way you're going to learn in this stuff is to, to ask question, uh, and to try and hopefully figure something out. I mean, the first, not the first time, uh, I remember one of my first trips out to the green river, it was in the middle of summer and the fish were rising. And you know what I tied on a streamer almost. <laughs> I tied on a freaking San Juan worm <laughs> and I cast it right into the middle of all the rising fish. And when I didn't catch anything, I could, Kind of started stomping away, like why aren't the why aren't the fish eating my fly, Dad? <laughs> dad, why aren't the fish eating the fly? My dad looks at what I tied on. He's like, Are "You an idiot?" <laughs> and I said, "No, I'm your son." And he said, "That's even worse." <laughs> uh, you know, uh, but I went and asked my dad. You know, I asked that question, "Why aren't they eating?" And I realized, well, when the fish are rising, Spencer, you should tie on a dry fly, unless you're Alex and you go with a mouse rig. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. Did I, I, I will leave <laughs> mid podcast rage, rage quit. <laughs> oh, but you know, it's, it's those little questions that you just can't be afraid to ask. And it's okay to look like an idiot. Cause we're all idiots sometimes. And that's just part of life. And if we don't, if you ask us a question and we don't know the answer to it, yep. we, we have Google. Yep. It's amazing. We have Bing chat. Now yep. we have chat GPT. 
what what do we even need us for? Uh, no, they, they need us, you know. And <laughs> but, I, yeah, go yeah, for it. No, you're good. I, I happen to know a few people in the business too. So yeah. if there's a question that's completely over my head, there's there's folks I know who've been in this for a long time. Well, and they've, go, they've written articles, they've yeah. made videos. And luckily for us, we we do this, a, like this is a lot of our day, right? Yep. And so I I can go spend an hour, two hours researching a topic and I actually enjoy doing that. Yep. It's, that's like part of the learning process. I that lifelong learner, right? Yep. And it also helps us when somebody does leave that comment on a YouTube video, does send us a DM. I have the answer now because yep. I went and I researched it and I can go try it on the water next time I'm out there. Exactly. So and, yeah, if, if there's ever like a video or like a topic or just something you want to learn about, don't hesitate to reach out. What wherever you can find us and and we'll do it we'll make it we will that, that's that's uh some of our best ideas that come from yep folks who had i uh, had questions and then we went and answered them and like oh this make a really good video and yeah in fact i i talked about that instagram story this yeah. morning and i asked people for tips of the week and i got like 15 people talking about leaders and tippet and guess what we got a leaders and tippet video coming out in a couple weeks, so I'm pretty pumped about it. As that. soon as Alex gets out of Wyoming and back to Utah, yeah, I got to edit it. It's, so it's a it's a beast of a video, but oh, it's going to be super helpful. It's going to be a good time. Well, and that leads us right into the last tip, uh, and this is one Alex came up with uh, completely on his own. We we bounced the other six around, and then Alex added this one at the end. So I'll kind of introduce it and then give you the floor for it, Alex. But it really is that you want to master the basics and uh you you talked about the idea of going a mile wide versus an inch deep so trying to go deep on the basics uh i just feel like a lot of people it it comes down to that what fly are you tying on like yeah it's it's the shiny toy syndrome where what what's the new latest and greatest fly rod or fly pattern or what piece of gear is going to help me become a better angler. And it's like, well, you can catch huge fish on the fly rod you have right now. Yep. And it, it, it really just, so there's the mile wide and an inch deep. I think fly fishing more times than not is an inch wide and a mile deep. Yeah. So like, let's talk about presentation. All right. Let's what, talk about what, it. Like, would you say that presentation is kind of important in fly fishing or uh, fly fly selection is more important or like I should I should go keep, look through the fly bin and pick out something new or do you think I should work on my presentation? Oh, presentation every time. If you, if you can't present a fly right, it doesn't matter how good the fly is. You're never going to catch fish. And so what aspects go into presentation? Everything. Like what? Like drag and your casting and where you're standing and understanding the currents and the fly selection itself and the right leader and tippet size. And so there's a lot of stuff. There's, there is so much you could go into yeah. for presentation. And I would say the same thing is if for fly selection, mm-hmm. you could go, are the, for example, dry flies. Yeah. Oh, they're eating dry flies. You're, you, you talk about this all the time. Are they eating dry flies or what are, what are, are they, they actually eating? eating mergers or, oh. you know, or are they just, they're they done just being this lazy. Spinner. Who knows? And this is something that I've actually learned a lot from Spencer. Is it Spencer's a really good dry fly angler? If if you guys don't no, know, you're, already. you're too nice. No, he he really is. And learning from him about the emergers and the duns and the spinners and the cripples and all that good stuff has completely elevated my dry fly game because I'm able to look at the water and go. Oh, that was an emerger eat. Yep. And before I would just, oh, I'm just going to tie on a dry fly and throw it out there and see what happens. It's like, oh no, I'm going to tie on an emerger. For example, today I used the caddis emerger. Yep. Instead of just I actually tied on an elk care caddis before, nothing happened. I tied on that emerger. It laid flat on the water. Hmm. It was kind of in, down in that surface film. Yeah. And boom, one after another, I started yep. catching fish. Yeah. That's an important, that's a, that's a really important point to make because you you can get as you can get as granular with this stuff as you want we were talking last night about 
uh, an angler we both know who has his nymphs organized by like the grain weight of the fly itself. That's intense, man. And you, you can really get down to that point of it, but that's, I mean, He's maybe an inch wide and five miles deep in, in but that situation. But he catches so many fish. Yeah, and he knows what he's doing. Yeah. So it, it's it, it's an important thing to remember because without that stuff, then we're – without that extra knowledge, uh, it, it's going to be hard to really do any of the rest of these things that we've talked about because you've got you've to be able to have those basics understood before you really move on to, to anything else, I think. I agree. Awesome. Well, folks, with that, I think, unless there's any more. Yeah, all right, everybody. We got to go fishing. Uh, we'll, we'll see you next week. Tie lines, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please remember to rate and subscribe wherever you're listening to us. If you've got questions, there's always a uh, link in the podcast description to send your questions. All right, Spencer, to us. we got to get out of here. Okay, I'm, I got to do my outro, Alex. Everybody, leave a question. We really appreciate it. All right, fine. Goodbye, tight lines. We'll see you next week. Over and out.